Hello and welcome to Standpoints. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Located in North Central region of Nigeria and home to one of Africa's highest falls, the Fari Rua Falls, Nasara State, created on October the 1st, 1996, is known as the home of solid minerals with a population of more than 3 million people. The state is blessed with various minerals such as salts, biotex, bauxite, and agriculture. As the mainstay of its economy, Nasara State Governor Umaru Thanko Almakura, ahead of his exit from office on the 29th of May, is putting mechanisms in place for a smooth transition of power. As he bows out of office, he has earned himself the name, the adjective of modern Nasara states. With me in the studio to discuss Nasara politics and the scorecard of our Makura administration is Yakubu Lamai. Yakubu Lamai is the Director General of Strategic Communication and Press Affairs to Governor Tanko Almakura. Nice to have you, Yakub. Thank you, Ayo. It's the last a time we were in Ekiti together, in where Ekiti. His, his, his Excellency <laughs> was all over the place and he conducted a successful primary Congress. And you remember the it's, Congress. It, with the APC Congress in Ekiti, it's, yes. um, it was it was something else. 33 aspirants yes. vying to become governor. And, and you Tanko know. Amakura was able to sort Absolutely. them out at the end of the day. They Absolutely. had a candidate, yeah. and the candidate went ahead to win the election that term. Uh, Dr. Kai De Fayemi. Yeah, thank you so very Such much. Such a cool task you followed His Excellency there. And let's look at, you know, in 2010, while campaigning for office yes. of the governor of Nasara State, Al Makura published a book, you know, My Covenant with the People of Nasara State, yes. where he stated that if elected as the governor, all his activities would be centered on improving life of the common man by focusing on education equipping people with such skills in agricultural production and rural change. Looking back, eight years after, mm. <laughs> how much change has Tanko and Makura been able, you know, to impact that he ending the tag of the architect of modern Nasara states? Well, thank you so very much, Ayo, for having me in the studio. Um, in 2010, which is even a, a year before the 2011 election. elections, Umaru Tanko Almakura was a rank outsider because he, you know, there was actually an incumbent, a sitting governor, in person of uh, Alaji Ali Akwe Duma, who was the governor and who was going to vie for naturally a second term in office. But then um, Umaru Tanko Almakura was pained. He felt that there was a complete and total absence of infrastructure in Nasrallah State at that particular time in 2010, 2011. There was no one, and I actually mean one, single asphalt graded road that was constructed by the state government of Nasrallah State. In the, whole of, Nasrallah in the State. whole of Nasrallah State. There was no traffic light. The people of Nasrallah State did not know anything about using traffic lights. All you would see are motorbikes, you know, and lots of accidents and so on. The public schools were in a state of derelict. And as far as I'm concerned, what the facts of history show us then was that there wasn't what Umaru Tanko Al-Makura would eventually create called the Ta'al Model Schools, which were story buildings, you know, as public primary schools for, 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 for you know, for, for students of, of poor uh, peoples, of poor parents. You know, so at that particular time, what constituted itself as Nasrawa State with 13 local government areas was a rural conclave, enclave that y actually had very bountiful potentials because it had solid minerals. But then there was stagnancy in government. There was inertia. You know, the government wasn't propelled and wasn't moving forward. And because of this lack of basic infrastructure, roads, hospitals, schools, Umaru Tanko Almakura, who was a real estate developer residing in Abuja and a you know, citizen and elder of Nasra State, felt moved. And he said, look, he needed, he was spurred to contest for office. And that was when he did that little pamphlet called My Covenant with the People of Nasra State. Umaru Tanko Almakura, you know, in that little book, what I always remember is at the end of everything he said, it ended with the writer, for the sake of Nasrawa State. He, you know, said, look, 
there was the need to turn these barren conditions of no roads, no hospitals, no schools, no e-libraries, all of these needed to be harnessed and you know there was the need for a very huge turnaround. So he contested and luckily and historically as it would be, he became the first ever person to actually unseat a sitting governor. He, he, he won the elections in uh, October 2011. Now, before he did, he actually had what they call the Ta'al think tank, which was his think tank of the campaign team that really studied the peculiarities of the environment of Nasrallah State, what was lacking in infrastructure, and what he even termed mental infrastructure of the people because he felt even the psyche needed to be, you know, sort of rejigged, so mm. to speak. Pardon, Between that time and now, why he has earned the label of the architect of modern Nasrallah State is that within a tenure of eight years, he's been able to transform and move Nasrallah State from what it was then. No asphalt graded road, not even one constructed by the only trunk A, grade A trunk road was the one constructed by the federal government. He has now constructed over 1,000 kilometers of road all across the state. 1,000 kilometers. Five kilometers he started within every of the local government areas. These, the, you know, Lafia, the capital city, which did not have traffic lights and now has what you call a very modern look. In Karu, only recently, last week, he uh, commissioned or inaugurated what we call the smart street lights. You know, these are street lights that had three components embedded in one. They would provide lighting. They would also give CCTV, um, CCTV mm. uh, you know, coverage for security, apart from the illumination, mm -hmm. and it would also give you Wi-Fi for the surrounding communities in really? Karu. Absolutely. <laughs> so what has happened between 2011 to 2019 in Nasrawa State is a transformation. So it can, can be going on the streets and... And you can actually, if you just simply subscribe to the Wi-Fi. But it's just started. Now, what has, it has just started. It is not, it just started in Karu right now, but he has already set up the prototype. He has introduced um, digital land administration through what is called the Nasrawa Geographic Information Service, yeah. NAGIS. The GI, it gives you everything aerial view of every settlement in the state and then therefore he's been able to cultivate planned cities and these are the basis upon which you can actually create whatever basis of development you want. So what has changed is you have a state now that is poised to move forward on the frontiers of economy and then its people can actually prosper and move forward and that is why he has earned for himself the label of the architect of modern Nasrallah state, not just with the physical infrastructure, roads, the Ta'al model schools, you have over 44 of them. There's Tory buildings all across every local government area in the state. You know, every high institution in Nasrallah state, the governor has either created hostels for them, in, in, in fact, including, he particularly almost took over the federal university in Lafayette, which is owned by the federal government, and even a private university, Bingham University in, uh, in Karu, which is a Christian faith-based university. Al-Makura even cre you know, actually made road for them right into the school. So what has happened is transformation that puts uh, the state on the pedestal of economic advancement. And then the psyche of the people is such that when he came in 2010, 2011, he found a government that was um, feudalistic as far as I'm concerned. You know, at that time, things like digital land administration was not there. So when Nasrallah State, you mentioned it was created in 1996. Yeah. Now, when they came, when Nasrallah State started in 1996, in that same year, only 310 people were granted, you know, CFOs, you know, yeah. certificates to, to, but then between 27, to, uh, uh, 2007 and 2011, when he won the election, there was a huge breakdown, a stagnancy in the delivery of um, uh, land certificates. Mm -hmm. It had to do with how connected you were with government. Who did you know? Only 24 C of O's were given in Nasrallah State between 20, um, uh, 2007 to uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. Now when he came, he demystified it because in 2012, his budget, what he was able to accrue from just, you know, digital land administration was over 34 million. But 
two years later, just two years later, he was able to gain for Nasrallah State over 600 million naira from the sale of land because he used that as a resource to, where he can galvanize the economy. So you see all of Isn't these indices. Morsi of O's. Morsi of O's. Because you have digital land administration, you have Najis, you have geographic information surveys, you have aerial mapping of every settlement. So you know your land, you know where it is. Why was there too much poverty in Nasrallah State between 2007 to 2011? Because I was coming to that, that in all this, was it just, you know, infrastructure that they kept, you know, uh, building? How has he empowered the people of Nasara State? Can they look back in the last eight years yeah. and say that, look, how Makura has dealt a fatal blow on poverty? Has he created employment? Has he, you know, uh, um, invested on human capital? You know, um, development? Umaru Tanko Al Makura is seen across this country as somebody who is a worthy advocate, you know, for people living with disabilities. He's seen uh, the chairman of the APC, Comrade Adams Osho Oshomole, says of um, the governor of Nasrallah State that when you see Umaru Tanko Al Makura, he demystifies the aura of authority because he has this common man look. You know, he is so in touch with the people. He's either adopting offerings on the street or he is going to the basic needs of the common man. Now, what are the basic needs of the common man? Between 27 and 2011, if you didn't have CFOs, for instance, you can't go to the banks. And so the banks cannot even give you anything. Uh, facility. A facility. And, that part and we look at it again. If you had just only one actual graded road, which is constructed by the federal government, then what about rural roads? How do the farmers actually move their farm produce from their villages to come and even sell? When you say Nasra State is within the food basket, it's an agrarian state where 80% of the citizens are farmers, yet they don't have roads to move their tomatoes, their cashew, and everything into the, the capital center. cities. So he tackled that headlong. He did not just build the roads in the city or the capital or the major senatorial districts of Lafia, Akwanga, you know, and, um, and Kefi, no. He went to every local government area and made sure they had that. Open up it it opened areas. up. So when he was opening up the rural areas, you were bringing development. And then, you know, while in perhaps the urban areas, people were getting higher rent, money for their rents and their houses were getting more values, the farmers now had roads to come out and also sell their produce as well. But apart from that, because of his love for the common man, he felt that, look, the schools where the children of these poor people go to, he needed to lift the burden from them. He introduced some educational policies, free education in the whole of Nasrawa state. Free. Free. He also reintroduced what, was, what happened some time back before he came, but was forgotten, the payment of scholarship grant. And then he also lifted the burden of feeding because he, would fe he feeds the children in the school. Now, the Ta'al model schools are story buildings. And story buildings, solar energy, you have, um, you have Wi-Fi, you have internet and so on for the children. But then there's also food and then there's no school fees and government gives you facilities, you know, to make sure that you actually stay in school. So the burden, even at the level of young people, NECO examination, government took it upon itself to start paying for NECO. And then he um, revived what was called the drug revolving scheme. Now, the drug revolving scheme at that time was long dead. I think it was eight years long dead around that particular time. Mm. So you couldn't even find it. In fact, when he came into office in, uh, on, the, on 29th of May 2011, the hospitals had been on formal strike because of lack of payment of salary. Then beyond all of this, you know, because we we'll still have to go back to how you deal with workers and how you deal with the poor people. His, um, on the salary payments? In 2011, when he came, the precedent and the practice at that time was the government that was outgoing, which left people with about four or five months of being on strike and so on, and so many months of unpaid salaries. The tradition then was they used to go to the banks, collect 800 million naira every month to pay the salaries of the entire workforce of Nasrawa State. But then two months after Omaru Tanko Al Makura came into office, the federal government of Nigeria now approved the minimum wage. Now what happened in Nasrawa oh, State? 000. No, not the 30,000, it was the 18,000. 18, that was 20, 2011. 2011. What happened was then, 
The government, therefore, just two months in office, now did not need eight mil, uh, 800 million, million to pay. It needed close to about 2.1 billion to pay. Mm -hmm. And there were two or three reasons why. Number one, the minimum wage law says that you should actually increase those who were at the rock bottom and mm -hmm. they should not go below 18,000. Mm -hmm. In Nasrallah State, Umaru Tanko Makura made it 18,900. But then beyond that, the rate of increment is not supposed to be across board. But in Nasrawa State, they did across board, which meant a director that was earning 41,000 naira suddenly began to earn 200 and about 56,000 naira as salary. It was quadrupled. And that meant that he needed to look for all of that extra shortfall and moved it from 800 million to the, for five years, five years nonstop. Between 2011 to 2015, Umaru Tonkwa Makura paid his salaries, month after month, nonstop as it went mm. due. What happened after five years? After five years, 2015, 2016, if you remember when the economic recession set okay. in and there was this huge drop in the, uh, the accrued and so on, what was coming accruing as federal allocation to the states dropped hugely. January 16, 2016, Umaru Tanko Makura assembled the entire state, stakeholders, elders, and called them to a meeting where he said, look, let's talk about our minimum wage because there's recession in the country and it is nationwide. It's not just affecting Nasrallah State, but I needed all of us, including labor, to find a way to tinker with what we have. And that was when, between that period, that has been resolved anyway, but between that period, they had to share, there was a policy that was brought out to say, okay, what we have is what we'll be able to give. And that, you know, at that particular time, you would find at the local government level, you would find something like percentage payment, because that was exactly what the government could, instead of everybody not getting something, they'll be able to pay what they had at that okay. particular time. Yakubu, hold your thoughts there. We'll take this break when we come back We'll still talk more about the giant strike of Umoru Amakura in um, Nasara State. We'll be right back after this time out. Please don't go away. Welcome back to Standpoint, reaching you live from Television Continental. And I'm with the Director General of Strategic Communication and Public Affairs to Governor Umaru Tanku Amakura. That's the Governor of Nasara State. Talking in terms of IGR, yes. how have you been able to leverage on your proximity <laughs> the, of um, Nasara State to Abuja? You know, you know um, the proximity is supposed to be a gold mine. Yeah. Umaru Tanko Almakura was a real estate developer before he became governor, and he was residing in Abuja. So he knew, look, with real estate, with roads and everything, Nasrao, first of all, Abuja itself, you and I know, was created when? 1976. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Abuja just had 120,000 people as a citizens. Mm -hmm. It was 848 villages that, were, that comprised the federal capital territory. Mm -hmm. But 30 years later, uh, 2006, I believe, Abuja's population had grown to 
176,000. Mm. So the increase was of over 650,000 people had moved, gravitated towards Abuja. The thing that happens is they all move to Abuja to work in Abuja, but they live in Nasrawa State. They live in Karu Access. They live in Nyanya. They live in Mararaba. So all those areas, the Abuja. It's Nanya, Nasarawa. Karu, Abuja, Nasarawa. Yo, you, when you get to, I'm almost speaking Hausa to you, when you get to Nyanya and Maraba, when Maraba in Hausa means the point of demarcation. Okay. From then onwards, you're dealing with Nasarawa state. Hmm. The facilities are overtaxed. If you take the entire budget of the state government of Nasarawa state and plow it into Karu, you're not even be able to solve uh, Karu's problems. Umaru Tankwal Makura had that particular place in his mind before he became governor. He articulated it, he talked about it consistently because he felt that that access can be likened to Maryland in America. The relationship between Maryland mm. and Washington DC yeah. can be the relationship between Karu and the FCT Abuja mm. so that we have that particular access, proximity. that proximity. But then when you have depreciated quality of life, he wanted to make life in Karu more competitive. What he did was he plowed a lot of resources. Within this last eight, last eight years, Umaru Tonkwal Makura has been able to create, construct a lot of alternate roads that has freed up the congestion of the traffic considerably wow. within that Nyanya access into Abuja. He's been able to create markets, including the mega market called the Mohamedou Buhari International Market. It's one of the biggest in West Africa. So that all those traders who actually, you know, just make sure that place is congested and build up on the traffic and actually move to these particular places. Let's look at security. All right. It has been a big challenge. There was a time we have even sleeper cell of Boko Haram yeah. hibernating in some areas of yeah. Nasara State. Yeah. There was a time, there was another time, bandits. You guys have your own fair share. Yeah. And anytime there's the wave of violence, Nasara State comes to mind. How have you been able to deal with this, the state of insecurity in Nasara State? In 2013, um, there was the embassy, the, you know, when the over 70 security personnel DSS were killed, guys. DSS yeah, yeah. guys. In fact, the very first assignment to Maru Tanko Makura did, May 29th, 2011, when he became governor, was to attend a security council meeting because of farmers' headers crisis. And you're also aware, since that, time. since that time, you're also aware recently, some time back when, you know, the governor of Benue State accused Nasrao State that, oh, people were coming in from Tunga and then attacking, you know, uh, headers and so on, attacking farmers and recoiling. All of that has been nipped in the bud. Umaru Tanko Al-Makura's panacea has been multifaceted. One, you have the community-based conflict resolution mechanism. That's one that has worked for us. Community-based conflict resolution makes sure that the crisis is dealt within the community because it is outside influence that infiltrate and just, you know, make sure these things have the, the, the scale of growing bigger than that. But beyond that, all the security forces have been given maximum there's support by the government of Maritown Kuala Makura. There's, there's an Air Force, you know, uh, highly powered for aerial survey. The police in Nasrallah State have one of the most sophisticated headquarters, which he built and donated to the Nigerian police. The DSS is supported, the road safety, the EFCC, the ICPC, and continually giving up vehicles as well. But then engaging the people, because, you know, you cannot force people to live in peace while you're giving the infrastructure to make sure that lives and properties are safeguarded, you also have to engage the people themselves so that they can embrace peace. And that's what the community-based conflict resolution has been able to do for us in Nasrallah State. So I can tell you that within the last two, three years, except for one recent incident that happened in Akwanga, it's been calm and, you know, uh, he's been able to really get on top of all of the security challenges. Now, we're talking about a small transition. Um, his party, somebody from the party who won the election, yes. what's, what's his name again? Uh, engineer A. A. Sule. Okay. He, he, yes. So, because there's always this thing that when a new man comes, comes in. to the saddle, there's a tendency to abandon the projects, ongoing projects that the old person who might want to be a man of his own and everything. It's a Nigerian thing. Yeah, yeah. So what and what have you put in place? Are you sure that those lofty projects you've described, you've talked about, We'll be, not carrying be abandoned, over. We'll be carried over. 11 uh, aspirants contested under the APC to become governor 
Umaru Tankwal Makura embraced all of them, but he told them he needed time to study their pedigree, their experience, their worldview. And he finally settled on engineer A.A. Sule. When he proclaimed, even if subtly, that he was supporting engineer A.A. Sule, a lot of people felt, you know, but then we carried on. He's been able to engage everybody. There's been reconciliation up till this point where engineer A.A. Sule has won the governorship. The reasons why uh, Umaru Tankwal Makura selected engineer A.A. Sule is that engineer A.A. Sule was at one time the CEO and managing director of AP, Afri African Petroleum. And when he did that in 2011, I mean, 2001, between 2001 and 2006, he was made the MD and he met AP, African Petroleum, with uh, a debt of about 22 million. But when he walked to do a turnaround, when he was living after five years, mm. through prudence and experience in management, he was able to put, uh, he was able to leave AP with about five billion you know, profit. That's so do one. We have a guarantee now. We That's do have a guarantee. The gentleman in question and the governor have been working steadily. The governor has not just been given what you call the documentary kind of uh, uh, handover note. He's been taking him to every project site. The best that you can do is what Umaru Tonkwal Makura has been able to do for the state. And he's chosen somebody whom he feels would carry on the legacies. And like would always say, for the sake of Nasrallah State, as it now, we don't have any doubt that with the party and with the caliber of the person that would take over from him, the good works of the architect of modern Nasra State, Umaru Tonkwa Makura, will be consolidated and carried on. Well, Jakubu Lamai, I know you're a journalist, seasoned journalist. Are you going back to journalism or you still want to start your state? <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I was, so, I was so impressed with TVC. Maybe I should come and actually apply when we leave office in, in, work in TVC, when we leave office in 12, 12, 12, I think 12 days or thereabout. Okay. But, but um, you know, the future is bright and there's so much to do. I want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you Yaku so very Lamai, much. Director Thank of you. General Strategic Communication and Press Affairs to Governor Tanko uh, Makura. And that's our package today on Standpoint. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can watch the repeats of this edition today by 7.30 p.m. and tomorrow by 7.30 a.m. I'm Ayodili Uzubago. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much.